my professor, my English professor, he uh, saw that I posted a thing saying like, oh, we want to talk philosophy and we want to do that, uh, you know, honestly or whatever. And we kind of want to make it a regular thing. And my professor was like, yeah, you're going to be talking metaphysics. Are we talking about the no the knowledge of what self? What we just call it like brolosophy or something? <laughs> brolosophy? That's funny. Right? Uh, yeah. Started. Yeah. Started. Started. Something I was seeing. Faster than light, spaceship of the future. The direction of the president of the United States. Stay in your hands. Is it human or inhuman? Earthly or unearthly? A born in that swirling inferno of radioactive dust. There is no word to describe them. We may be witnesses to a biblical prophecy come true. Why is it that we usually ignore the fourth dimension? <laughs> is this the human race of the future? Aliens on the border. Did you guys make talks? That's dope. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Well, I, not myself, but yeah, we did. That's cool. Sweet. M- my brother and I and my cousin. That's actually really, really cool. Mostly my brother, because he's the actual like music producer person. Nice. I was just kind of like, I wanted to sound like this. <laughs> and then, so he gave me the beat by itself. And then I just cut in all like the little episodes. You were the, you were the PD? Yeah. Or the production? What? Well, kind of. Not really, well, I guess. All I want is for it to go, aliens on the border at the end. He's like, I got you. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, Roger, can you bring us in real quick? I need to fix something down here. Hey, uh, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Fourth. No, I'm sorry. Shit. That's, <laughs> that's, see, that, that's, uh, welcome to another episode of Aliens on the Butter. Uh, this is uh, Roger Namitas, your uh, regular co host who's been absent for a while now. So I'm, I'm back. And no, Aaron wasn't the fucking co host. No, neither was Orly or Kevin or any of the other guys who felt they wanted to. Uh, take my spot. So who was with me on the the time that I had Chris James on? That was, was Aaron. He? Aaron. Oh, it was Aaron. Yeah. What the fuck? I totally forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. Um. So uh. Yeah. So because uh, you're forgettable, Aaron. I'm, That's uh, why <laughs> I'm back, and uh, I'm not. I'm still a little tired, but I'm here. Uh, you, you always have your uh, your host Josh. Josh is here. Say what up, Josh. Um, having a nice coffee. I actually, uh, tried to recreate the coffee I was drinking the other day, but I iced version of it uh-huh. and it didn't work it just like all the honey just clumped up in one space well yeah you can't have cold yeah i know but it's just like i did it hot first and then oh, i threw in the I ice and i was like you know maybe it was enough time but it just didn't work out yes. so what i mean is iced coffee yes but like last time uh we tried coffee with like turmeric cinnamon and a bit of honey and he's actually drinking that right now. A little bitter, isn't it? No, it's, no, it's actually yeah. You you put like spicy. a little, little pinch, little pinch of turmeric, yeah, turmeric, turmeric, no whatever. No, no yeah, a little bit of that. A little bit of that life. Little bit of that life. So yeah, uh, and of course, and we uh, our guests. We have local comic. I'm using that term very lightly. Very <laughs> Mario lightly. Mario Valdez, <laughs> right? And uh, his cousin who just decided to join us. <laughs> what was your name, man? Was your, uh, I didn't uh, catch your name already. Uh, Isaac Martinez. Isaic Martinez. Cool. All right, bet. So he's cool. coming in from uh, the Valley. He goes to UTRGV. Okay. He's oh, cool. A, he's a chemist down there. You're a chemist? Yes. A no, just, you know what? It's not about philosophy anymore. We're going to talk chemistry. Yeah. Uh, uh, it'd be uh, cool to have Matamoros on so they can talk uh, about that's chemistry. That's true. Yeah. Sure. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, cool. Yeah, dude. I used See, to like live in the valley for a good while. So it was cool. in McAllen. I want to move there, dude. Why? There's more opportunity. At least it shows more opportunity. Why? It's like, uh, a, it's like a, I mean, well, I guess so. It's a good spot. You because know? of the industry I work in, I work in logistics. It's not as developed as Laredo. You know, Laredo being the number one land port in the right, United States. Yeah. Right, yeah. McAllen and Edinburgh, the whole valley is just trying to catch up to Laredo. But uh, they don't have the, I'm not going to say experience, but yeah, maybe the infrastructure infrastructure of experience. Uh-huh. And a lot of the major companies that don't. infant structure, homie. <laughs> the infant structure. A lot of the major companies don't really give it um, the time of day. I think because Laredo is such a heavyweight in the border. Yeah. But uh, the company I work for it actually has an opening over there. So I applied. Hopefully they can give me the opportunity. I worked for a private airport in McAllen. Private airport? Yeah. What? I you worked for a private airport. It was uh, awesome. it was, it was interesting. Cases coming. Dude, actually, so it, it's a crazy story. And you know what? This is kind of how I wanted to introduce the podcast, too, because I just need to, I feel like I need to reacquaint myself a little bit because I feel like I'm an intruder right now. But um, Yeah, dude, the, everybody wants to hear you talk for another 45 minutes. No, Let's shut go. the fuck up. Let's um, go. So the, uh, <laughs> the, um, uh, I 
I used to work for a private airport, uh, and I started helping with like moving like planes around and all that kind of shit or whatever. That's what we would do. I wouldn't get in the fucking plane and drive it or anything like that. We use these little like tractors that would hook them onto like the bottom wheel, and that we ferry them into a uh, um, into like like the hangars or whatever. Uh, this guy that I was actually super cool with, he was essentially like my supervisor. Uh, he was like always super chill. He was like, "Hey man, you go to like Hangar Eight. They have a uh, they have a an air conditioned bathroom. So like you, you can go over there. You can just take fucking nice you, you can just kick it in you there, can take dude. A shit and not and he's, he, it's, he's like because when I would take my breaks, I would take my breaks just like there in any hangar, and like I would just like be eating my food and like a hangar, and that was it. We didn't really have like a break room or anything like That's that. Cool. Um, so I would just be there, but it was ho- always hot as shit. Like they, those hangars are like ovens, especially during the summer. So he would tell me, he's like, no, dude, you can go here. And I would basically eat in an, in an air in an air conditioned restroom. And so. <laughs> it's almost uh, like saying, like, like, like a car, like AC comes, like AC is standard in this one. Oh, no. Shut yeah, up. yeah. No, but no. It's no. something we take like, for granted. Like, the, the only one that had an air conditioned one was the one that was owned by a bank. So I think it was like a Wells Fargo, like, mm. sponsored uh, yeah. thing. So it was like, yeah, they had, they had that there. Well, the guy who was like super cool with me or whatever one day he just stopped showing up to work and i was like what the fuck I mean, this is weird or whatever and i started asking what was going Kill on himself. well my nice my aunt uh any way to go my my Tell aunt was uh was was one of the uh, ops managers of that of that place and i i kept asking like what was going on she was like, i can't talk about it can't talk about it finally like two years later uh i asked like hey whatever happened Apparently, he found out that he was under investigation for assisting with drug smuggling. Oh, uh, so he just hopped in a plane and dipped. And Where'd nobody, he go? nobody knows. Dude. <laughs> nobody <laughs> knows. He That's just cool dipped. As fuck, he did, and, and if and you and if you if you you can actually find this story if you Google um, if you, you put like like lost plane or whatever. People think that um, uh, people think that he was uh, that he died in like an accident or something like that and they just couldn't find the wreckage but others were like dude he was he, it wasn't general knowledge um but he uh, was apparently under uh investigation at the time so he dipped so that's uh, gnarly yeah was this, that's a, pretty was cool, this right? uh you said it was a private right so they were, private, yeah they're it's running the, well yeah. i could say it isn't mccree aviation if you look it up it's it's the okay. one if you go if you go to if you go to McAllen, it's right next to um McAllen, uh airport or mission yeah airport or whatever. I, I pass by it every day on my way to work it's like it's you see Street. the airport but then you also there's this tiny one on the, on the side yeah, yeah mccree that's where i used to work they um, got like flight in, uh flight lessons there but they also have a yeah. private hangar that they yeah work. they have private uh they have yeah they have their private hangars they have a um a maintenance area they have like a fucking lot where you can go and you can buy planes if you want to just show up and do that it was pretty cool, man. I want that one. That's where, it was, that's where Trump pulled in. Uh, yeah, was Trump was there. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't there around that time, obviously. But there were a lot of like big names that would pass by. People that I didn't give a shit about, like George Strait. Like, who fucking cares? <laughs> like, I guess, like you know, like they would like like a bunch of country stars George would pull Street. up, and they would like they, they like everybody would be like, oh my god, like it's oh, or like another one. You know, was fucking Jeff Foxworthy showed up once, what the and fuck I was, is that? He's a he's a, a country comedian, bro. He's uh he's the the the, the same uh, like the blue collar guy. You might be a regnant. You guy. might be a redneck if yeah. you. He has like that fuck badass seventies mustache. No, seventies no? mustache. So you know the guy who does get her Put done. Drink, Jamie. Uh, you know who uh, who, who get her done is. Garth Brooks. No, no bro. bro the Larry the Cable Guy. Larry the Cable oh, Guy. Oh yeah, that fucking okay, asshole. So right, well, him, him, Jeff Foxworthy, and some and, other uh, dude. The dude with the cigar all the time. Ron, Ron Burgundy. Ron no. Burgundy. No, no. <laughs> that's fucking Anchorman. That's Anchorman. Yes. Ron Jeremy. No, no, that's, that's, that's a porn star. star. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, it's another cigar. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. His, whatever. His penis. Yeah. Ron, what? What the fuck is his name now? Ron White. Ron White. Yeah. Yeah, that's Ron right. White. He's actually still doing comedy. Yeah, he's, he's actually funny. Like of the bunch, he's he's funny. But anyway, so these the they, a bunch of names would show up, and they were you know like everybody was like, oh my god, and I was like, what do you fucking want? What was your, the name of that guy? Your blue? coffee. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. We all know his name. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Speaking on speaking of coffee, Isaac and I just went to, uh, and I don't own this store or anything. My friends own it. Los Olvidados is a local cafe here in Laredo, Texas. We had a uh, this drink called the. It's a more of a green tea, from the region of Uruguay, Argentina, and Peru. It's called mate. So the native Amer the Native Americans, the natives there, uh, came up with this tea. I guess thousands of years ago, and. Uh, Argentinians now claim it as their own, or 
Uruguayans. Uruguayans? Is that how you say it? Uruguayans? Uruguayans, yeah. So they, they claim it to Uruguayans. be there. <laughs> well, I don't know what that word means. Iguanas. People from Uruguay. Oh, Uruguayans. Uruguay. Ur- <laughs> Uruguayans. Or Peruvians also. Peruvians? That's Peruvian, Peruvian that's puff that's pepper. Peru people. Right, yeah. The Peruvian puff pepper. Um, so <laughs> they all cl- better that he don't go on continue. They all claim nah, that it, they all claim that tea to be uh, their own, but it actually belongs to. If you had to rank like the Latin American race, races or ethnicities, <laughs> what? You mean the countries or no, like or the, the people, like, the, yeah. the races, who's, like the people. Who's the coolest one? Yeah, who's like number one? <laughs> Which one is superior? Oh, in regards to what? <laughs> like just who's the superior? Latin Would I rather race? fuck if I had like? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Like or, who's or, or superior? Or in terms of how like crazy they are in terms I don't know like just who's superior like if you think about Asians Mexicans like, are definitely superior? lot definitely like, how did this like get racist this fast Japanese have the coolest rhythm of language <laughs> yeah they, they sound, they sound fucking they're intense that's why I only watch my anime S- subbed not dubbed okay uh, that's but, but anyways uh, Mexicans are definitely not it you don't think so no they're not they're not it no where do you think they rank? But we're way better than Nicaraguans. A hundred percent. Way better than Venezuelans. I was going to say, like, maybe Argentinians are number one. Yeah. Well, right? because they have, like, Nazi blood in them or something. Nazi, Spanish, Italian. They have, like, all the, the white power. Oh, yeah. All the yeah. conspiracies right. point towards them. Yeah. So they, they're the ones that caught on to all the Nazi uh, prisoners. I didn't mean to make this shit racial. I just thought it was funny. That was it was fast. They all, <laughs> <Yeah>. Argentinians <laughs> also developed a really badass dog named the Dogo Argentino. I don't oh, the Argentinian uh, mountain dog or whatever? I don't I know, but it's like a... They like also a developed a really good soccer player. Which named one? Named uh, Lionel. Messi? Messi. <laughs> or, <laughs> or Maradona? Maradona. No, 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 Maradona. Hey, bro, we have Hugo Sanchez, cuz. What's up? Who? Hugo Sanchez? <laughs> oh, from, <laughs> from, from <laughs> Mexico? Club de Cuervos? Oh, I mean, like, he used to play in Real Madrid back in the day. Ah, uh, dog, you'll fuck about soccer, dog. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I played for Loyalo Heat under 13. <laughs> <laughs> so did Isaac. Oh, y'all, we y'all fucking did. balled out or what? Did, yeah. I balled out. You went to the practices. I would just, I would just walk. I actually walk. I was just actually walking walk. on grass. That's it. <laughs> you just wore shorts at the, at the park. <laughs> the towel boy? <laughs> no, no, no. You just be like, I was like, water. I was just what there. the fuck did the uh, guy from Superbad say? Chill out, bro. It's just fucking soccer eating kicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember Everybody that scene, dude. You pissed your pants. Uh, yeah, that was like in fourth grade, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> no one forgets. Hey Roger, I brought uh, meditations and the uh, meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Okay. Cool. And uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck by Mark Manson. This book sucked. This motherfucker, Marcus Aurelius, is not he have something to do with? Um, he was literally the emperor of Rome. Why? Why did this? Okay, why did right. this book suck? Uh, I don't like the analogies, even though I love analogies. Oh, so I read the opening of it, and it very much read like a uh, like, s- a, like a teen. Yeah, book. is that what it, it's like? Uh, so it, that's what the title makes me think of. If you're 18 years old and you never heard of Jordan Peterson, that's what you want to read. So here's the thing: I can't get behind a lot of. Well, maybe it's because I haven't been recommended the right stuff. But every time I hear Jordan Peterson talk, I just hear like incel stuff. Like it okay, just says, well, I, mean, I like his lectures. He's a more he's a puffery pastor. I I don't know what that means. What do you mean? Pu- yeah, it's yeah, puffery. You know, puffery. Just okay. Puff. Right. Like a uh, uh, hamna hamna you know, right. just you know. No, uh, what is that? He reminds <laughs> me. No, he reminds me of like a life coach Ben Shapiro. Like uh, so mm, that's what I that's don't know. What ben Shapiro, a lot more open minded and, un- and a, a lot more open minded and a lot more based on. So he's a psychotherapist. He's a, yeah, he's a real like legit he's practicing a, doctor. Yeah, that guy's really smart in that aspect, but I don't like how he tries to generalize. Um, his way of thinking towards everyone as if it applied to everybody. I like his lectures on like uh, his, on the, the archetypes idea of God and on archetypes and shit. Those arch- lectures are the shit, bro. Life. Okay, I need to take a look at that stuff then. But I mean, one yeah, of th- one of the things that kind of turned me on to this book was that, uh, so I've read a few like, well, I guess would qualify as like a, like self-help books. Like I read a, yeah. a Quiet, the uh, the Power of Introverts and it was like this whole thing about hey, where is that? Like, getting, I, I forgot to fucking bring it. You're this, an it, no, I remember next. Hey, look how clean those books are. I That's know, why I want them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, come the fuck down. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> let me drop fucking coffee on them right now. Uh, what's it called? Um, the uh, so yeah, you're just out here taking books. You didn't bring no books. I already gave him two books. Uh, I gave Roger, him the prints. Don't, be, don't be that guy. Do you Roger. want the prints and uh, the, the and fucking Cthulhu uh, books? Or whatever. Not Cthulhu. It's uh, it's like. But dude, you guys mythology. didn't even say which ones you liked of mine, except. Oh the wait, I already one. got the uh, the one that I wanted from Peralta and Herman. 
like beyond good and evil. Fuck Perlata, dude. <laughs> Perlata. <laughs> Perlata. <laughs> Why does everyone say his name like that? Uh, no, I don't. I That's don't. exactly I just, how it's spelled, dude. What's no, funny is I remember, I remember like one of the first times we started hanging out with, 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 with Peralta. Is I asked him, I was like, hey, man, I call you Peralta, but like, I don't know if you just don't like that because I'm addressing you by your last name only. And he was like, oh, it's whatever, man. Like, it's like, we, already, we already have... Uh, Oh, what's his name again? Robert. Robert. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we don't have another. We Robert don't have a Robert. Group. Nah, but yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't look, look like a Robert. He doesn't, he doesn't look, look like a Robert. He doesn't look like a Robert. He doesn't look like a Robert. What he does he looks like, look like a Peralta. He looks like a I don't know, like a <laughs> Juan, Ef- Efrain or some shit. Efrain <laughs> is Ephraim. Ephraim. All right, well, Ephraim, Ephraim is a cool name. Shout English out to Peralta. He's actually watching it. Hey, what's up, Peralta? What's up, Peralta? We're gonna shit on religion in a bit, so stay tuned. Yeah, stay in here, you Jesus lover. Um, it's funny. Did you see the welcome mat when you're coming in? Yeah, yeah. dude, that welcome mat I, is fire. I totally took that as irony, and as soon as I walked in, you said, "Yeah, it's all based on irony." I'm like, yes. I was, I, was, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I started cracking up as soon as you read it, and Kiana didn't understand why, and I was like, "Are you serious? Like, have you heard him talking?" <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. I so I read those uh, th- that that book, and uh, the thing that I fucking hate about any and all self books, self help books, is that they uh, it's very much become a marketable thing where like they yeah. market like false positivity or like i like, feel like they're just pandering for the most yeah, part well, that's what i'm saying well, yeah, they're po- p- pandering well the and, and and marketing on on, on on that kind of thing on, on this like false hope like hey man everything's gonna be all right did just you read 12 rules i'm sure i my next uh, yeah, book, I have uh, that book. I have that. But d- like okay, I have it. Have not read it. A lot of people. Um, <laughs> you can it, You're it, talking Peterson again, right? Yeah. This is Hold Peterson. on, I want to finish up on the Mark okay, Manson okay, book. Right. My favorite story in this was uh, Metallica. Uh, I don't know, it was a guitarist or whoever. James Hetfield or it's at the beginning because I read that. Yeah, right. He, he he. It just gives that good example on him, and after that, I just got it started getting lazy on the book, but uh, it is a little bit too super, superficial because. He wants it to be marketable. Mm -hmm. If you go too deep, like 12 rules or archetype of the collected unconscious going young in, um, that's a lot more difficult for the collected, you know, people to to understand or to want to read because no one likes to get that personal. No one likes to see that reflection of themselves in a book because people fear it, you know. And also sometimes books are just like fucking difficult to digest yeah well this is actually a really easy read yeah cause that's what i'm saying like this, i mean this the, is like you can tell by the title he knew i uh, i saw the title and i was like okay it's gonna be a little bit superficial but you know I'm like this looks that, a little bit more I'm intense i'm is going i'm going into you're literally judging a book by its cover yeah 100%. Exactly. it's but a I, it's a good book um I it's mean, uh, it's so somebody's asking. It's the subtle art of not giving a fuck by Mark Manson. And uh, there's a the follow up to that, right? That yeah, it says on there. It's called Everything Is Fucked: A Book About Hope. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the but I the feel thing, like the oh, it's hold hope. Up, hold up, let me let me finish this. No, uh, dude. The, the the thing about this one was that uh, everybody told me that it was a uh, a book uh, that doesn't market on that false positivity. Like it doesn't make it a, a point to be like super overly like positive about things and like ignore like that, hey, visualize that hey sometimes act. shit is kind of shitty you know and it's can okay to feel the, shitty can you pass me the link to the to the live stream is there a way or is that just on the facebook just go on the sister? facebook yeah you'll find oh, okay. it on there if I'm you go to my profile share. i shared it already so you can share it off of yeah. there if you want nice um was gonna say um but yeah uh what was the last thing that i told you it was reading? yours oh we were going know. towards uh Same. meditations yeah I was going to ask. So today, Isaac told me that Meditations wasn't published by, or it wasn't. Um, it wasn't meant to be really shared. But it was like his own. It was for his own self. He wrote Can that. you talk into he the wrote, mic a little bit more? I'm sorry. Oh, that's cool. Um, so, yeah. So he wrote it during a time of like great distress in his own life. And essentially, it was to ground himself. Uh, he just decided to um, one day just write about the people in his life and people who have who were in his life in the past who weren't with him during those times uh during that time that he was going through some real difficult things and he just wrote down their name and then what they taught what they taught him and um and so yeah he he didn't write that for for anybody he wasn't trying to give anybody advice it was for his own consolation and to get him through it yeah it's just basically a journal entry Right. Uh, of a brilliant man. No maybe. spoilers, dude. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's roughly, well, it is based on stoicism, which is the philosophy he followed. Yeah. 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 I, um, 
the fuck was I going to say? I was reading Nietzsche. That was what I was reading last time. That's really hard, man. I was telling you, I was telling them about um, the uh, one really cool one that I was reading. And I think it was more of like a compilation of like stories or like his like key like philosophies or things that he posed. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them was uh, about how every uh, every student or a student has to be unfaithful to his master because unfaithfulness is a quality of mastership. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was fucking dope. Like, I kept reading I've, that over and over again. I've and read that. And it was, it was most likely it was So you cheated on your girlfriend, and I was like, dude, I'm a fucking master. No, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I completely play. missed that. Like, I'm yeah, kidding. Don't cheat, don't cheat on your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. That's not cool. Um, But uh, but do cheat on your girlfriend. But I also don't. Um, right? You got to find the fine line. Yeah, no, man. So I, I, I nah. here's, here's the thing. So here's what kind of got me into, like, doing that whole thing about, about, about philosophy. I was in debate in high school and it was value debate right lincoln douglas debate so a lot of it was like what is that i don't um, know what that is lincoln douglas debate is when it's a one-on-one -on -one debate right nice. and when you call it uh when it's lincoln it's Douglas, it, it was it was it was about uh it was about like a, a big thing was a uh, topic it centered on the it had a topic right it was like resolved uh the two-party system is a uh, you know a, a detriment to true philo a true democracy or whatever the fuck Right, so it was like that, and then you had to say like a affirmative case and a negative case. You had to make both, and then you had like the value and why you were upholding that, and then you had your you know all these other things. So yeah. w whatever. Was this a constructed conversation then? It was it, like structured not, conversation. No, 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 because you so your your case is your case you presented based on whatever it is that you have on there, and you have your like sub points and topics after that, and then when you're in the middle of like debating. You have your like different rounds. So you've got like the okay. cross examinations where I start asking questions and I say, Oh, you said this shit, I'm gonna fuck you up on the next round, right? Or you right. something like that, right? So and then you've got your like closing rebuttals or well, whatever. You, you gotta so, be really um how, how do I say this? You gotta know what you're talking about then with doing one of those. Well, debates. I mean, yes and no, because it's like uh, it was weird, man. I'll tell you, I don't want to talk about all the experience, or whatever, because Josh already made me feel self conscious about talking to me too much, so go fuck yourself. Um uh, but the uh <laughs> yes, the one of them was worked. about uh okay. <laughs> One of them was about uh, we we so that's what brought me into the whole thing of starting to read Kant and uh, and and the Leviathan Thomas Hobbes uh, theory. Can I borrow that one? Just, I have it right there. I, okay, I'm taking that one. Okay, um, the Leviathan and uh, it's literally the one that I had for political philosophy. So it's like that book. theory theory of justice. John 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 Rawls. John Rawls, yeah, um, I and like a good, a good other like no, we and we read we read Darwin because there was a topic that came up which was a social Darwinism, which is basically the way capitalism uh, was structured to um, initially work, but is no longer like that. Yeah. Um, and it was it, it was weird because it was like social Dar Darwinism, same shit, like you know the the survival of the fittest, whatever, which wasn't coined by Darwin. I'm sure you know that, whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Survival of the fittest. It was his. It was his. Uh, uh, his cousin, right? I don't fucking know who. Something it was. like that. It was dude. someone. Cousin, no, it dude. was someone that. Came, it was someone that <laughs> it came years him. later. Yeah, because Darwin and never read, said that. Read his read Origin of Species, and when then this guy just posed it like that. He said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Survival of the fittest. I remember that. Um. So. Uh, I vaguely remember that. So we were we were talking about that and and uh, social Darwinism. That whole thing was uh, the topic at that point was bailouts and uh, how the government was basically. Uh, destroying like its whole whole idea is we don't actually live in in a capitalist society all that much. I mean, we do in terms of like consuming, but it turned more into like, hey, these we've deemed these parts too big to fail, so we're gonna go ahead and throw some money at them to keep them. We're gonna from go ahead and throw half that's, of the world's happened, money at them. That's, right. that's what happened with Chrysler and Chevy right? Yeah, so they were deemed too big to fail because they were supposedly uh, uh, important for national security. Um, so, because they were providing parts and, and, you oh know, my God. they were providing parts and like Humvees and all these kind of shit. And shits, the so. grossest part about that whole ordeal was like that, uh, in the year after that, or in like the following months, like CEO fucking, uh, bonuses and everything were like skyrocketing wages were still stagnant. Like there was really like all that money it's, just evaporated yeah. and went back. And into, the like, worst the was like the housing industry or whatever that was uh, going yeah, on that was too. The worst so, one, right? so um, that was the main yeah. thing that, that made it the, that, that, That's what started it. Yeah, the yeah. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. The Triple B, uh, Triple A. Yeah. So they essentially were like, hey, man, uh, we're going to. Something like that, right? We're going to make money out of these things that are uh, like f fixed value that don't. They've never done that shit before, but we're like theoretically 
this uh, this building or whatever is worth X amount of money, and we can right. use. Kevin the, said Herbert Spencer said that he's right. Okay. That, that was the name. Herbert Herbert cool. Spencer. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. And so they're like uh, the the value that this building represents or said, whatever. Wait, wait, gonna, said the evolution thing. Yeah, the survival, the survival of the fittest. Survival yeah. of the fittest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they were like, we're gonna create an algorithm so that that value can be used to create more money. And then they were buying insurance on whether like these bets would fail and all. It's a bunch of fucking crazy shit. And one of the dudes that was recently on JRE has like a bad. I forgot. I think it's Matt Taibbi. I think I know what you're talking about. He, he, like he went. He went deep on, on yeah, like investigating what, what happened. Yeah. Right. He breaks it down really well. I'm doing a terrible job of it because I don't remember it too well. Yeah, I would say it was TARP. It's the Troubled Assets Relief Program, which is what ended up happening after that. And they went and they fucking threw all that cash in, and then it caused a downward spiral in the economy. And then we brought up a stimulus package afterwards, supposedly counter it. But it was kind of a way of seeing like it was like hush money. Like here's here's cash, go spend it, and then other people didn't spend it, and they saved it, which was the opposite of what it was supposed, it was supposed to, do. to do. Yeah, and um and the uh, the e- economy stayed very stagnant after that, and we just we ended up printing more money for that. That was the whole point. That's the whole just inflation. Work, the whole That's when inflation came in. Inflation, through, right? yeah. And well, we've always done. I mean, like, not us, but other 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 places like Venezuela, for example. <laughs> <laughs> They were just kind of like, hey, man, it always, I know shit's bad, but here's money we just printed. And then they either gave it out, and then that was that. So um, that's how shit don't work, right? So, yeah. um, I mean, I don't know. It's a fucking convoluted system that's been fucked since, you know, the, the removal of the gold standard. So it, it, it's all set up in such a way to, like, position, you know, these fucking Go- the corporations to yeah, be number exactly one, to right? Be the top of the top, and without them, we'll be fucked. We're so. just we're just the the workforce yes. for them. So it, from there, uh, debate. I went to uh, a, a Texas state, uh, a Texas speech and debate club, um, and uh, it was it was during the week. It was during the the summer. I went over there and uh, met with a lot of like lawyers and attorneys and all these other people, or whatever, who were basically like certified for like public speaking and those kind of things and we underwent this whole course over the summer and i started i got like a shit ton of books and just started reading all these things and i I got really into it and at some point i just wasn't into it after a while and i just got kind of tired of like uh when i when i graduated i was just like "Eh, you know like uh nothing matters around no actually (laughs) it was weird it's like the opposite i got when we said we were going to talk about this um i got really into religion uh, in maybe my senior year of uh, se- junior senior year of, of high school. What uh, what denomination did you follow? Uh, I was a Christian. I but what? To, I, I like iglesia, those tongue speakers? Or? Iglesia Cristiana Misericordia. Oh, okay. They're so what, Methodist? I, I don't know what they are. Honestly, I don't know because I didn't really Puerto pay Rican. attention. <laughs> they, and and uh, that brought up brought off like a whole other like spin on like philosophy and religion yeah. and stuff and it was weird I, I i studied theology for a bit like that was weird for for to, to admit that and it was a uh, it, it was weird to have such like a huge fucking transition like that um yeah. but uh well, I, isaac and i um gra- our grandma she was a pastor she had her own church I lived in the church with her. Actually. You lived in the church? <coughs> yeah, oh, so the back of the house was the house that where we lived, and then the whole front half of it was a sanctuary. Oh, damn. Yeah. It was white, just white everywhere, and a big cross. And, uh, I don't want to I don't want to be insensitive, but that's that's still going to be really fucking creepy. Like, that'd be no, really it wasn't creepy. That. Well, one, because I was, before it was sanctuary, it was just grandma's house. <laughs> okay, <fair laughs> enough. And uh, she was always a very religious woman. Uh, I'm not say religious. Okay, yes, obviously religious, but she was amongst everyone in my family. She was more spiritual. Word. And uh, obviously, there's a difference. And um, I know the people who followed her teachings, which is my my immediate family. A lot of them took it differently. But uh, but yeah, both Isaac and I grew up in a christian home very very uh denomination based on baptist protestant which is uh well, baptist and protest against the catholic church so we were always quick well at least i was always quick to speak against anyone who who followed the catholic denomination. yeah i grew up fucking catholic as shit a lot of people here did i it's used like to always have those debates that's actually what happened I, I grew up middle uh middle school i went to the you know sunday school shit i got my first uh, communion, mm-hmm. and then I just stopped going. Got my Jesus trading cards. You know? Yeah, there was uh, yeah. my trainer badge. I, I went to VBS throughout my whole childhood. 
uh, vacation Bible school. Oh, okay, cool. So I went to the one at the church that I would go to. Which my grandma would go to that church as well, and then I would go to my grandma's vacation Bible school. That I wouldn't go every year, but you know, I would always be very active in church, like s- super active actually. Um, I started. Drummer, p- right? You're a drummer. Yeah, I used to play in the worship band. From like age <laughs> why is it always like, whenever I hear that like that's one of the one like that's like the main position I think that dude I got like, a, I got dude, all that I Christian girl I was, about, I was about to say you <laughs> must have been fucking dry like a Christian pussy dude. <laughs> yeah. no yeah I bet uh, I, you know cause you know oh yeah you know abstinence yeah, that's the Christian dude. loop, loop Mario right, played the drums right. the rest of us had to carry like six chairs <laughs> yeah to <laughs> get the, the girls <laughs> God damn yeah I, I just tuned my drums after the um after the actual lecture was done and everyone else had to carry like 50 chairs to impress the girls. But, um, no, yeah. So from age 12 to 17, I played in the, in the worship band. It was pretty cool, man. But, uh, I mean, playing music in general is probably cool. Yeah. And that was, that's probably why <laughs> now, I don't know, man. That's my, probably, that you can you find can't some really fucking, mean. it's like, cause you're more so caught up with like, playing the music versus like what the content is in the music. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah well i i don't know that's just what i was thinking <laughs> no uh you're right actually it's funny i, you know I felt the band that we had last time that we're all like kind of kids remember we talked oh, about yeah. this i don't want to say their name because i don't want to burn them or whatever i was but like a shitty shitty youth band like shitty so Christian it's church funny. band. It, they, no no they were they were they were good they were good i'm not for for kids they were yeah. good right because how old were they i didn't so here's the thing man i saw them at i saw them at boot i don't know what you guys are talking about just there's a know. there was a, a a band that played at the mic drop i don't want to say their fucking names don't say i don't want to be i say this would be mean but oh was it t- i hadn't gone back yet right no. no it was like the week right before i think right. i remember yeah. you guys talking about that yeah. Yeah, yeah okay okay I'm so sorry, let's carry on. they were good but they're young they were they were i, I saw oh, i showed up to a show at boogaloo right and it was uh already pretty late but they had already they had just gotten off stage and i figured oh well like they're playing with the other kids at boogaloo or the other like not kids but the other the other the other musicians like modern sophia modern sophia justin, justin Little Dude, those all. guys they're great yeah right Both of them so, are great. so yeah. i i i was telling them like i i figured oh well they're probably like you know around the same age or whatever right they were much younger dude their parents came out to the fucking mic drop to watch them play so one of the and one of the parents was my english teacher in middle school no it was, shit it was weird seeing her <laughs> it was yeah. so so uh <laughs> did we, she stick around for the jokes no no, <laughs> yeah, no so, she so, didn't. So, so check this out so i was I, I i told the uh um i was talking to him i was like hey you guys did a great job like they did a lot of really good they had a solid red bone cover Right, honestly, and so I told them, and uh, they were like, "Oh, thanks." So I was like, "So how'd you get start playing or whatever?" And they're like, "Oh, we all kind of met at church." And I was like, "What?" Oh, was, cool. Yeah, we were all like church band, and uh, and and we just started forming. Yeah, we our I'm band still friends. I'm still friends with a lot of people from church. I, I all those people I met in church, and in every single church I I did end up going to, I, I have a special place in their heart, even after uh, hating the religion as a whole. All those pe- <laughs> <laughs> all those people, not well. I yeah. mean, for the most part, a lot of people are good people that go to church. They were great people. A lot of people, you know, so I like grew up, like, as they were my cousins, brothers and sisters. A lot of adults were my teachers, straight up. Just teachers along, like, the teachers I had in school. Uh, we all had our favorite teacher in school. I had my favorite teachers in church. And um, I still, to this day, I, I try to say hello to them when I see them. And I always shake their hand. And I respect them because, like I said, they were my teachers. And um, just like other kids in church say hello to my parents, and uh, I've had the same respect towards their parents because, I mean, I grew up with them. So, yeah. But I mean, and I don't think like you know ideological differences warrant like disrespect. No, they don't. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, sometimes now they do. it kind of does, right? Like we have that yeah. whole identity politics thing going on. Well, yeah. I mean, like, like but that's more so like in the public sphere, you know? Like we, like oh, people yeah. beliefs wise. You know what I mean? Like well, I, I don't think I don't that like that necessarily applies to just. I, I don't really see it too much here, like animosity over like. Uh, there's not much. Diver- there's not much diversity. Do you see it? Uh, it Among, also that. Oh, yes, also okay, that. Okay. Okay. Also that. Amongst religion, no, because we are all fall under the. Everyone basically grew up under the religion under the umbrella of Christianity. So amongst denominations and that level, I'm talking like if I, I'm an like I'm an atheist and my family will like. That's it, different though. That's your family. No, well, other people do. Like I've I've gotten like things. I actually get less. Um, I get less of a challenge from the people I grew up with in church than my family. 
Do you get me? My, fir- my like fir- your family is uh, not afraid to tell you. Oh hey, no, hey, you're they'll, a filthy they'll just... fucking sinner. Yeah, hey, you well, not necessarily all my family. Repent, motherfucker! Like, <laughs> dude, I fucking most, love that. I, video. I didn't watch the video. But. Most of my family, they hate when I bring it up because they know I know as much as them, if not more than them. Oh, I see. You get me? Yeah. So there's nothing they can really say to. There's really nothing they could say. They're like, but you so, grew up at grandma's house. It's yeah. A fucking church. Yeah. So Isaac was actually closer to church than I was. I don't know how much he studied personally, but I know he read a lot every night, right? Oh, yeah. I had, I had, um, I think like half a book of Psalms just like memorized because I had to memorize them. Um, and like my mom, but she told me that like she taught me how to read with the Bible. <laughs> and that's why they're like burned it's into true. my mind. Like, Spanish, I, have, we, I learned how to read the Bible. With, I read the whole. I, I, I read. I read. Yeah, I read the. I read the Bible like as a kid, like in like Spanish. I, I, like, in Spanish and in English with my grandmother. Yeah, and then again with the, the girl who made me kind of convert again back into yeah. Christianity. So, um, but I, I know all the like the the names like Nabucodonosor and um, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, yeah, all sounds those. Cooler. Like I know them all in Spanish. Spanish, and and then. The Bible it sounds everything sounds pretty in Spanish. That's the name of the uh, the ship in the Matrix. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. I didn't watch it. The Matrix. What? The Matrix yeah, is a great dude. fucking. I, film. I know the, the the story and the whole th- you know I know the whole thing, but it's a good flick. I, flick. It's long, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the one thing, um, the one thing that I see in my own immediate f- family, which would be well, my mom, but she's the one who gives the most of oh, yeah, a fuck course. about me actually being a christian even though i'm not um but uh, i remember the day I, I came out as um i lost my faith and i told her i'm no longer uh, a christian uh she said and all the work that i i did just teaching you and <laughs> all the work i did lost and i said well it's that, my own decision yeah. it's not work that was thrown away because a lot of who i am at the end of the day that's who you are the that's who I was structured. That's what I learned from my childhood. So a lot of my beliefs and the way I think are based on Christian ideology. As much as I don't want it to, I'll think of like when I'm going through something, I'll think in, in the story of Job that God put him through so much uh, adversity and, and he kept faith not in God, right? But I, now I, I apply it to myself. And I remember, do you remember what grandma would do with us when we would read a a, a verse, but every time we would, they would see someone else's name, it would apply our name? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was a, a like an exercise to essentially get closer to God by, um, I guess, viewing these stories as if you were looking at yourself going through these. Yeah, right, so right. instead of third person reading, it was more first person reading, it was more of a meditation. So our grandma would make us do that. And um, so I started doing that. I, I remember became, becoming aware that I was reading my own life through the Bible as a child. And uh, as I got older and I mentioned Job, I, it almost came naturally to think of his life, think of my life through his example and um, walk through knowing that the faith I have in myself was the faith that Job had in God. And uh, even till now, even as I speak, even as I'm speaking it now, it just like alleviates some pressure that I do have uh, of life. Because it, it brings comfort. At the end of yeah, the day, like, I, yeah. I, I, me, me personally. It's a like, dope ass book, dude. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's one, one of the thing things. One thing Christianity does do is it brings hope to people. And yeah. that it's. I wish I could talk to people without destroying that hope yeah no no definitely like and, and that's the same way that i feel like like my mom i remember the when when she was when she was really sick over these last like you know like maybe towards the end of december um yeah for towards the end of december on, on um up until recently she's not in the hospital anymore and doing a lot better but during that time she kept asking me she's like why are you posting on facebook and asking people for prayers and stuff like that um if you don't believe in anything and i was like well because you do and i'm not gonna take that away from you like maybe yeah. i'm not gonna apply how i feel and that kind of stuff whatever about it you know 
to you. I'm not going to say, like, hey, it doesn't fucking matter with all these people who are offering their thoughts and prayers and support. It doesn't fucking matter because, I mean, honestly, we don't. You know, it's like, I'm not going to do that shit. Like, I'm not a fucking every asshole. Time, every time someone says something, like, for example, when you asked us to, to pray for your mom. Yeah. I think I told you I'm sending good thoughts and energy. Yeah, no, no, and I always expect that. I was like, "Hey, send send thoughts, wishes, prayers, because vibes, whatever it yeah. is that you want to send." It is, you know, my mom needs that energy. I, so I personally now like I operate more on the idea that there's always like a balance in the universe, kind of thing. It's just like you get the energy that you put out, you put out, and it's as simple as that. Like that's the way I feel. Um, it's kind of like a golden rule kind of thing, I guess. But. Um, and there is something there because getting into more into the like, more metaphysical side of of uh, religion or, or I'll call it Christianity because that's really all I know. Um, I don't know if you remember ever being in a prayer group amongst people like in a circle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah so yeah. you know when you're going through that and you feel like a like a people say it's a presence of the Holy Spirit, but it it's a it's a collection a of the it's an energy that you feel and you yeah. really do feel it the, yeah. i felt it many for times sure. yeah. yeah and people claim Dude, but that's a, but that's a human trait that's a power that we have as human beings right like we're yeah, able yeah. to bring together we want to call it a vibe be, to be a the music too is also a big thing like i remember seeing like uh i read about the whole like psychology behind that or whatever uh, about how people were wondering why it was that music was such a big part of it and it's like well some dude said, like, hey, look at the difference between, like, a prayer circle that doesn't have music in it and a prayer circle that does. It's always a lot more of a intense experience when well, they have yeah, music. Well, yeah. And they're purposely, the music's purposely constructed that way. It used to be back even, like, when it was, like, classical, like, even just, like, the hymns dude, that they used dude, to sing. It was... It's, music itself is primitive to the human being. Yeah. It wasn't always just enjoying listening to, to, to being sad and listening to Interpol or, or getting yeah. high listening to, to Pink Floyd. It used to be very much based on um, ritual. So in the primitive mind of, of the, the human, it's very old music. And like you did mention that music while you're praying is a lot more, it's a lot more pretty and intense. Y- yeah, it's more intense. And just like all those human beings got together and prayed and you felt that energy or that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's funny. No, no, it's but, like right now. But every like, time, every time. just put vibe check. <laughs> every time, every time I, someone asks for prayer, I think of the times I felt being in a prayer circle and feeling that good energy is, I hope that me as an individual can send that energy that I, I hope I still carry to, for example, your mom. You get me? So, I'm just carrying on the idea that I can carry energy like I did when I was a Christian. There's so much trying to de- trying to detach myself from uh, the doctrine of Christianity or or yeah, yeah. whatever. But I, I, I think that's um, that's one problem that I think most people who lose their faith after being so dedicated to it. That's one of the the hardest things is that you kind of lose your your best friend. You lose someone to to reach out to in in terms of like adversity if you're about to go through something real hard like an exam let's just say that you'll you'll pray to god and be like hey help me out through this please i'll suck um, your dick <laughs> but but when you don't when, when you get out of the faith you no longer what are you gonna pray to god you don't believe in that anymore it's Kidding. really just you that you have to look at and you look around it's just me here Josh, if I may speak for a second. Do you guys, I have not said anything. I'm just <laughs> letting you guys talk. No, no, uh, I was going to say, um, so just the, um, so here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share just that little bit of the, of, the, of the story that I feel is like super relevant to that. Uh, the r- part of the reason that I left, uh, that I just didn't, you didn't, you know, follow that anymore. I, uh, I had gone to, to to church. This is after me and my my girlfriend at the time broke up. Uh, that I just kind of felt like I didn't want to go anymore because she was going to be awkward because she was always there, <laughs> right? But I kept going either way. I kept going and I kept going with a, with, with a couple friends that I had like kind of decided to to come with me and stuff. Uh, Pickles being one of them, right? Um, and Pickles, uh, is, Pickles is a woman. No, no, Nichols. 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 He's, Nichols. he's a uh, he's he's the the Pickles. Uh, yeah. So. We uh we would go whatever pretty often whatever and uh, one time and I think Nichols was there to witness this uh, they pulled me out of, off to the side and they were like hey if you if we can just you know I need to give like a a quick like I need to talk to you about something. <laughs> 
they pulled me off to the side and they basically said, like, hey, I know you and this chick aren't together anymore, but some things were said uh, that I need to address. And it was basically... In Who pulled you aside? Of one of the bastards. Right. Uh, and uh, and they, they basically, like... Uh, accused me of some shit. I'm not going to talk about this or whatever. But they, they, they accused me of some shit and I was like really fucking pissed off about it. And so... <laughs> I'm that was, of Jesus. That was, that was the first time that I was just like, all right, I kind of don't want to come here anymore. Like, I was, that, that was that. Like, that it was really un- yeah? It made, yeah, that was... Ugh. It made me really uncomfortable. Then I went again and uh, one of my best friends at the time uh, was... Uh, or not was, but is like super gay. Like, <laughs> like extremely gay. And nice. he's still one of like my best friends, right? And we would we would hang out a bunch and stuff, and and it was always like he was never like oh my like f- my best friend who's gay is just like my best friend. We'd hang out a lot. And um, one time, uh, him, his boyfriend, and the girl that I was talking to at the time or whatever, we we went to church, and while we were there, like you know, we were like talking about this and that. And uh, we left, right? When I went back by myself, they made it a point to start talking about who you're hanging around with or whatever. And they singled me out. And they, they were like, you have to pay attention to the, your friends and the lifestyles that they're living. And because you personally have a responsibility. Um, and it says so in the Bible because you're preaching the gospel, or whatever and you're supposed yeah. to do, is spread the word of the Lord and this and that. You have a responsibility to go and, you know, Try to convert them to turn their life around heterosexual, <laughs> and Jesus so this is the gay out of them, you know. Yeah. So they said they turned the life around. Get so in, get I, get I, in deep. I said, I said, all right. Well, uh, um, I, I don't know how I feel about that, but I personally don't think like they're not doing anything wrong. They're not into drugs. They're not stealing. They're not doing anything or whatever. Okay, like, well, and they, they straight up said like, well, do you know what religion they are? And I was like, I don't think they're in religion. They're like, okay, well, that for one, they're going to hell. <laughs> right, all right. So they're, uh, they're, they're like second. Uh, you know, was you gonna burn it, forever, dog? Is your they're your friends? If I'm not mistaken, they were a gay couple. I said, yeah, there was. I, that's an abomination to God. Well, and I was well, like, okay. I understand that, yeah. but uh, also like it's not any of like they're not throwing it in anyone's faces. They're not trying to make you gay or anything yeah. like that. Like, why is that? Why is that? Uh, and this was just me as a, I was, mind you, seventeen, eighteen years old. Um, maybe even younger. I was like, shit. I might have been like sixteen or seventeen around that time. Whatever. I, I was like, what the fuck? Like, why? Are, why is this such a big deal? And they kept making it like a point to say like your f- gay friends are going to hell. And I was just like, okay. Well, I thought like, you know, well, if you, I, if, I was a little kid. Yeah. Like I thought God loves everyone. They're like, well, yeah, but also no. But you know, he hates God, the gay. God. God. Um. Oh, what verses? It doesn't matter what verse. It's in there. It's God hates. The sin, not the sinner. Uh, he just likes the sin, not the sinner, right? So all the gays are quick to be like, oh, God, hey, sin, not sinner, right? So, um, I mean, for the Bible, for the book Leviticus, being gay is wrong. That's what the Old Testament says. And there's really nothing you can do about it. But, no, no, that's but what, also, no, but that's what the Bible, I don't say that. No, no, I, I, Bible understand, says I that. understand. But also, and then this is afterwards when I started yeah. getting more conscious about it and started reading it into it, or read into it more. The whole book of Leviticus is like a bunch of fucking things that are abominations. Yeah. Like you couldn't get a fucking haircut, yeah. right? You couldn't wear... You can like wear you right now, you're sinning just because you're wearing a shirt that's different from your fucking yeah. denim jacket. Yep. You're so, I mean, like... Uh, you can eat uh, red meat. Uh, uh, yeah, you can eat red meat. Uh, you, you, oh, and not, not punishing your wife? Like, if you're yeah. not punishing your girlfriend or whatever when uh, she not gets Not punishing man, your slaves? Yeah, that, that, like that kind of shit, that was, that was a sin, you know? So, yeah. it was like... What the but fuck? It, but, you know, but how, do you, how am I being like nitpicky? Unfortunately, that's what they believe in, and that's what they have to hold up because that's their beliefs. That's fucking wild. Have, it is. I have challenged that though to some Christians, and they say, "Oh, well, that was the Old Testament. After Jesus died for our sins, now we don't have to make sacrifices anymore." Uh, so the law changed in that way, and I'm like, I thought God was perfect though. Like you thought what? the law was never to be questioned that way, or. Yeah, God made these laws. What, what the fuck do you mean that they were amended or changed? Like, <laughs> yeah, well, let me you know, let me ratify this shit just yeah. to make sure. You know what? I think I gotta go with the times a little bit. Maybe yeah. they don't have to slaughter a goat. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I, I said one time. Yeah. I just, the, this girl said like it doesn't. 
She was like, it doesn't matter about this or that, whatever. Uh, even if it's a light sin, it's still sin. As soon as mm-hmm. it was like, only a Sith deals in absolutes, right? That's, yeah. It's a fucking uh, Star fucking Wars Sith thing. Lord. I don't know what part of the Bible it is, but it, if it's um, if you sin one of the Ten Commandments, it counts as two sins or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what the point yeah. system is. Honestly, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the, math. I don't know. Is, fucking, it, is it like, or, and if you don't take sin, down, like okay, three they, points. It, you, once you get ten times without sinning or whatever, you get like you, you got a seventh one free or yeah, something you gotta, like that. If you do like, you gotta sin every now and then. Your little it. Jesus reward card. Is yeah, you know, get a hole punched. <laughs> if you only do the a odd cross, a little cross hole, yeah. hole puncher. Yeah. Odd number sins are you gotta suck the, a demon's dick. Oh, like, too okay. bad. you gotta go suck this guy's. So the priest, um, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where the priest comes in. Yeah. Dude, one of my favorite jokes, uh, not it wasn't actually a joke, but I remember uh, they were giving Bill Burr a bunch of shit during a talk show. I'm not sure if you guys saw that, they, it, but he was. Uh, they were they were there and the, the the interviewers were like, I'm sorry, but don't like a lot of people who have seen your show and this and that would say that maybe your comments on the Catholic Church and the Christianity uh, they went a little too far. You know, would you say there was an issue? And he was like, "What the what the fuck are you talking about?" He goes, "Well, I mean, the things that you were saying, like, weren't they a little too far?" And he's like, well, "I thought the priests went too far." Like, <laughs> it was fucking yeah. funny. Um, but yeah, man. Um, so this isn't a podcast about philosophy uh, completely, in case you're wondering already still, because there's still some people that are like wondering if what are we talking about? about? Yeah, no, no, but this is, I, I, I like the I like the flow of the conversation right now. Either way, so well, um, but what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, no. So they, so then if you're talking about like not like I guess the sins. I mean the 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 rules getting like amended amended. Um, so does that mean where else does it say other than Leviticus that it's a that's a sin? Uh, I think I in um in the second book of uh con, con how do you say it in English conolescences? Um Connolitions now. Condoleezza uh, rice. Uh, <laughs> Something like that, bro. I know it <laughs> comes out twice. His fordship. I, I I see I haven't read it in so long, but I have it. I like the King uh, version. The Congolese, there. right? I don't know. Cornelius. <laughs> I, I actually dude, have I a Bible app on my phone. So. I have a Bible right there in the bookshelf. Do you? Yeah, I do. Really? Satanic Bible? No, it's just a regular oh. ass Bible. It's a regular ass Bible. Yeah. Bust it out, dude. Let's get oh, holy. It's in, oh, oh, it's not. No, it, no, it's, no. it's in. Uh, <laughs> Let's get holy. Oh, uh, oh, never mind. Thessalonians? No, no? it's in Corinthians. The first oh, Corinthians. 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 First okay. Corinthians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it wrong, dude. Oh, okay. So it uh, says it, it says, "Hey man, don't." Yeah, it, it first mentions it in, in Corinthians. It says, well, actually, Leviticus Jesus obviously said, "I'm not it's about uh, that gay shit." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> homo. It also gets, <laughs> no homo. It also gets brought up. In, Take a piece um, of my body. No homo is what he said at the fucking last supper. <laughs> 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 right, it also gets brought respectful. up in the in the story of Jonah, though. Uh, oh, does it? Yeah, uh, Job. Uh, I mean, sorry, not Job. Uh, Jonah. Sort of Jonah. He, God's trying to get him to go to Nineveh. To, so he can basically tell them that they have one last chance to like stop doing the shit they're doing before God just smites them off the face of the earth. Hey, stop with the booty shit, and bro. Some of the shit was <laughs> is that they were kind of having gay sex. Um, That's the whole thing behind Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Yeah. yeah, and Sodom and Gomorrah. So it it doesn't just come out in Leviticus; it comes out many times throughout. Oh. Hey, Corinthians says, uh, "Do you not know?" That wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Fornicators, adulterers. Let's talk about the Book of Enoch. Idolaters, milk wasn't prophets, this all Sodomites. No one ever talks about the Book of Enoch. Because it's crazy. It's Enoch, fucking cool. Enoch was the son of... Um, yeah, he's like one of, of the descendants. Abel, right? Yeah. Yes. He was the son of Abel. And he's also one of the only people that gets... Doesn't die. Gets literally taken. No, that's Elias. He's, he also him. He doesn't fucking die. Yes, who else? It was Am like, I right? It's like a flaming chariot. They're chariot like Kyle, dude. Horses, That's where Eric von Do- Do- so. Do- whatever gets chariot of the gods. So in the book, I think it's Elias or Enoch. I don't know which one it was. Enoch, bro. Is it Enoch? Yeah. So it was the uh, dude. I'm paraphrasing the Bible right now. I don't remember that well. <laughs> <That's perfect. laughs> Bible. With your hands up here in a grand gesture. <laughs> no, yeah. that uh, a light uh, uh, chariot that had wheels turning within wheels came from the sky. Basically, a UFO mm-hmm. came. They're like, yeah. hey, Enoch, you know, fuck humans, right? Gaila. We're going to yeah, go so it's like a lion into the domain with like of God. three heads or something like and that. And like that's when that's it goes it. back to like the... It's Revelations, I yeah. think. Oh, is it? Okay, That's cool. the beast. I don't that's when it goes back to like uh, Zachariah Sitchins. I need to read the fucking Bible. I need Sitchins. to do that shit. What's up? Zachariah Sitchins. Yeah, that's what he bases his... his uh, 
That's what he bases you know, the 12th planet on. Oh, you know what? Now I remember what I wanted to bring up, which was... Uh, so, at work, we were talking about uh, <laughs> the fucking... Something you shouldn't be just talking about at work. Yeah, who gives a fuck? <laughs> we were, I work at a bullshit call center. Fuck it. I don't care. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So, I was talking about the uh, the pilots that chased UFOs and then they released oh, the videos right, right, and right. shit. Right? So, I was, you know, I was thinking, like... All right, if we now have, like, legit, not just video evidence, Sorry. but, like, radar data, all this other shit of a thing that they're claiming they don't fucking know what it is, right? And it may be from elsewhere, from a fucking different place in the universe. Not is so it, much. Wait, wait, wait let ahead. me get to the point. Yeah. The point is, is it so far-fetched to believe that the whole model of, or the idea of, like, the Anu and shit was is Anunnaki? possible? Yeah, the Anunnaki. Like, is it so far fetched to believe that if if now we have like literal evidence of a fucking craft that's not from here, right? Quote unquote. Well, it like now people, do are, we people are quick to to say that it's not from here in space. Okay, so that's assuming that that's it's living during the same time we are, but they're never they're never uh, coming aware that maybe it's not from this time. Because there's a difference between space and time. Space is. Where we are, the, at the, the literal moment. area that we inhabit. Yeah, right. time is, we can be in the same space in a different time. But if we live in the the uh, the reality that Einstein poses, they're actually both the same thing. It's the yes. space time continuum, exactly. right? So that's lit- the literal fabric of yep. reality, right? So what so I like what I believe, what I think is the most likely uh, situation. Like for example. That whole TikTok thing that there was like a TikTok looking spacecraft on the oh, okay okay yeah you know what I'm talking about that's the, the, that's the one Air of the Force, videos that, that the Air Force there. caught a, a spacecraft that's the, the that's the uh, the pilot that's the on Navy, JRE the, yeah and he like talks about the whole thing the Navy airman who saw a TikTok looking spaceship floating above hey, the was water was that the one that we showed at, um, that event well, we with showed the a band? series of them mm. we showed that one and we also sh- showed the one that's like uh it's doing this and then it goes belly up and it just that vanishes. One. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So imagine like that's th- the one that, that Bob Laser talks about. Imagine that was. I think that aliens are us in time, coming and moving. He's in not time. the first one to say that. Yeah, we we, we were. Yeah, we were I'm sure. About I'm not. The last time at uh, at 40F, oh, Johnny yeah. was. Yeah, so yeah, they, yeah, Johnny they, was, they, they was talking about his. Now <laughs> imagine. Now dead. imagine that TikTok looking spacecraft was us in time coming back to save us in that moment. What if in that moment they were catching that on video, something was going on and they stopped it to protect their past? Doing a shit job, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, if, what if the... I don't know, dude. Okay, so look. like, Okay, that, that could be a possibility, right? Like a but what if, uh, what if it's just... Excuse me. What if... Okay, let, let's backtrack here a second, right? Now, what if uh, Roswell actually did fucking happen? Right now, now it's a lot more fucking probable that it happened, right? Because of that footage, right? So, and if we think about it that way, then we've had access to that tech for a second, right? So then maybe that even validates what Bob Laser was saying, and they've Lazar. managed Laser, and they've managed to you know reverse engineer a craft or learn how to use one of those crafts, yeah. Right. So now humanity has access to modes of transportation or means of energy that are way beyond what the fuck we now use or consume right yeah. fossil fuels fucking nuclear power whatever this is completely beyond that shit turbines right? and all that shit yeah like super beyond this is literally if he's right in what he was saying that they were backwards engineering that it's like an anti-gravitational fucking machine right that is powered by a crazy ass element that is not found on earth or at least we don't know how to apply it to anything right 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 then like is there is there an element that we haven't on a master there are oh yeah that's right. several un- unstable let, elements let, at the let higher ca- level let the chemist so yes please i'm not i'm dumb so yeah we are looking for elements um currently if you pull up a periodic table and near the bottom right you're, you see all these ones that have u u u or u u o those are just placeholders for chemical for elements that we think exist we just haven't found them so in theory they're there so in theory they're there they're supposed to exist but we're still looking for them and we do that by some unlock characters just by (laughs) smashing like um particles together uh specifically uh neutrons with um uh elements that currently do exist bombarding them um with neutrons um to add neutrons to them which changes who they are 
changes what they are and in order to make them heavier. That's because uh, that's in that's the what is it? That is a requirement. There, it's going to be heavier than the than the very last element we have um, discovered, and so um, so yes. There's ordered like atomic weight or whatever, right? So it was. That's why it goes that way. You're saying that this next was going to be heavier. Yeah. So like uh, 100, 102, 101, 102, 103. Yeah, they go up and up and up. Right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly now, right. do we find the same order in? Um, well, there's an order in the periodic table, right? Yes. Do we find that same order in uh, um, natural chemistry? Natural chemistry? Oh, organic chemistry. Do you organic mean? chemistry. I'm sorry. Well, are there are there right? orders that way? <coughs> I don't know if I'm. I'm so, um, or that, I I'm mean, too, I'm too stupid to the, ask a question. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Question, I so, like, organic like, chemistry, it. inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry. All use the same periodic table. They all use the same periodic table. There's no different periodic for each. <laughs> but um, we do find periodic trends, but no, the order it's pretty universal because we all use the same periodic table. Okay. No matter what chemistry you do you can always find common ground in that we're all looking at the same elements. It's right. not different ones. So I don't know if you know this or not. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. However, <laughs> uh, by the way, on uh, just to go back to Balazar just for a minute, right. he, uh, if you would like to buy, uh, I'm not advertising anything here, but <laughs> if you want to buy reagent-grade chemicals that typically only a lab would have access to by a company called Sigmolodric, they can only sell to... Uh, universities and businesses and labs but if you want to get those same chemicals um and you're not one of those uh, authorized institutions uh you can go to bob lazar's website unitednuclear.com and you can buy reagent grade chemicals like um concentrated sulfuric nitric phosphoric acid um pure chemicals yeah so look it up boom. unitednuclear.com check it out nice boom. for all you mad scientists yeah, out for there. whatever for you need you. whatever you need no, no. Well, well, no but what i was going to bring up was that so if, if we have access to different modes of creating energy, then we're purposely stagnating the wide masses of population, right? For f or not we, but they, whatever, whoever they is. Yeah, the people to make that a have profit on it. Are they making a profit on it or what are they? Like, yeah, what are that's the whole point of all the wars, no? Not necessarily because that is based on us consuming fossil fuels. That's I'm saying if they have access to energy which is, doesn't – use fossil fuels as a means to like mm -hmm. create propulsion or whatever yeah. then that completely renders them obsolete right like right. if we were able to so the reason they're not using that is because they don't want to go broke they want to keep making yeah money. we do have the technology for that if you we look at college station they're the first uh city in texas i believe to be 100 percent powered by renewable energy they don't burn coal or natural gas uh to produce their uh energy i mean they still have gas there but to power the city itself it's, it's completely all renewable. Okay. So and we can so like solar and, and we can fucking definitely wind. do that. And one way to do that to achieve it would be by investing heavily, more than we currently do, in well nuclear energy, and s get the money or the lobbyists who fight against it every single day out of our politics because it's really that um, lobbying, lobbying against it because, I mean, if we all switch to renewable energy and we all drive electric cars. I mean, they're going uh, to get fucked in terms of <clears throat> money. I think it was Elon Musk that said that uh, he could solve the, well, we as humanity can solve the energy crisis going on in China. That he, he you could easily power um, Beijing uh, with batteries, with solar power. You just needed a, a, re a large enough reservoir, right, to keep all that energy flowing. Is that how he said it? Something like that. Um, I don't know well, that we video. need a we need a good method to store renewable energy. There Currently, there's no real uh, good way to store it. We have batteries, but um, I mean they're massive um, and at times inefficient. But batteries are the way. We just need better batteries. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's one of the constraints of uh, renewable energy. We don't really have a good way to store it at the moment. That's why people say that. Oh, this, what if the sun's not shining? What if the wind's not blowing? we don't have a good way of storing it. And that's why we currently depend on using it up as it's being generated. But the more research and getting lobbyists is out, what, yeah, like we, just can, already, money at it we so can already literally power ourselves right. off renewable, off um, fossil fuels. And then it just plays into a factor of like 
powers that be don't want to, you know. Yeah, they they don't want to lose their money, so yeah. they're gonna keep it. Because like all the the like Middle Eastern like royalty and shit, that's what they're based off of, right? Am yep, right? that's how we have trillionaires, and they don't even talk about it. They're like you've never heard about them. Yeah, I don't have any chemistry questions, man. I wanted to. The, what I wanted to bring up was uh, Bob Laser talking about Element One Fifteen back in the early nineties before they discovered it, quote unquote. Because like, there's an actual clip where it's his. I, I, could, I mean, I don't want to look it up to be honest, but you can find it where he brings up. Oh yeah, they're using this element specifically. It's not naturally occurring here on Earth, but this is the element that they use in the uh, whatever the fuck powers that vehicle that they had that he worked on, right? The Blackbird SR seventy one. No, 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 no. Like oh, uh, like when he was talking about like where he worked vehicle. at like S four, where they had like a craft from fucking elsewhere oh, or I whatever, see. right? So he's saying it works with this element, element one fifteen, right? And this is him saying this like in the early nineties, late eighties. And then if you look up like when it was actually discovered, we do have one fifteen. No, that's right. That's what I'm saying. Moscow but it was again. it was discovered way after he brought it up. Like he brought it up before it was public knowledge. Oh, what I'm so at the time he he announced it, it wasn't yet. Yeah, yeah. Like that was like late eighties, early nineties, where and right before they tried to like discredit him or whatever, and then like the whole Area Fifty One thing died down. He brought that up in an interview and then like the official discovery date for that element is not until like the 2008 10 somewhere on there 2011 you know so like there's some truth to what he's talking about to a certain extent but now what i'm saying is that like if if in fact whatever the fuck the navy chased was like an extraterrestrial craft then is it so far-fetched to consider that our origins are based on what the fuck Zachariah Zitchens was talking about. Well, um, as far as all the practical elements um, that we can actually use to, for example, build spacecraft right. and things like that, um, they've already been discovered. The new ones that we're looking for, we're really just looking out, we're just really just looking to discover them for fun. Or not really for fun, but just to say, just to fully complete the periodic table. Because they're not really useful for anything. Yeah, they're, they're very unstable. They're so the higher unstable, elements, right? they last for like picoseconds. Like, you can't even study them. And so, really, all we do is look for a little signal. And if it's strong enough, then we just want to be able to say that it exists, even if it's not useful for anything, because it's so heavy that it's quickly going to destroy itself. That's what radio. Uh, that, that's radioactivity what is radioactivity like, activity like the decay is. of the actual element itself. It's um. It's. Uh, an element that's too heavy for itself it can't exist in itself it, it's constantly breaking down and it's releasing gamma uh gamma rays it's just breaking into each other it's collapsing because it's so heavy are gamma rays the energy that that is throwing out is that what gamma rays uh radioactive uh like isotopes yes they're releasing it's like a part of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum and it's very with high that, energy and with that they are releasing it with, could deteriorate like your DNA. With like that, that, they're releasing um, particles. That my mom commented. Did you see that? I'm so sorry. Keep going. With that, um, they're they're releasing uh, radiation as a means to become more stable. So essentially, they're like purging themselves. They're getting rid of it until they can reach a state where they're okay. Yeah, the half life, right? That's what yeah. It is. Yeah, they're trying to exist as a stable isotope of itself so whatever. the whole like thing about like chernobyl was it supposed to be like not another uh, what 1500 years or is it oh yeah that? you're not gonna be we're, we're all gonna be dead yeah many people after us are gonna be dead before that place can ever be re-entered safely which is wild yeah that's what i don't know i, I, I assume watched, we're probably I a lot more efficient on, on oh it's crazy right it's nuts. fucking insane man. yeah yeah this, but, uh, the series yeah, is amazing but yeah that's um that question of where are we currently discovering or looking for new elements? Yes, but there's really no point to because all the not that there's no point to, but we no, have right, so, we right. have so much all more useful, to learn. All right, the so useful ones. The trust me, we, we already have all the ones. That yeah, you the, the fucking use. most so you common feel ones. Like it, uh, not you feel, but is it basically like improbable that there would be like some groundbreaking element that we'll find that's like gonna help? At like least everything. not on the surface of the planet. You know, like uh, we still can't account for the unknown. Like, what no, because he's saying, he's saying, like, in terms of like factoring, like you're talking about, um, 
you're you're talking about like they know they exist and we'd be able to figure out if something would exist we just need to find it you know like the whole like proving of like dark matter even is that like the same thing as just kind of explained and like theor- theorized to be in existence just you can't i mean attain it or it wouldn't be useful in any in any capacity at that point it's measured by what we can't measure it's measured by what we measure let the scientist answer yeah <laughs> yeah, my head hurts no, just thinking um, about that. There's uh what I'm saying is for all this badass technology that you see we're getting uh videos of aliens doing shit, um like switching speeds or switching like direction at like Break crazy fast. Speed. Yeah. Yeah. They I don't know what obviously I don't know what technology they're using. Right. But as far as us, It'd be crazy if you did He's <laughs> <laughs> like, this. look man, let me tell you yeah, guys. Yeah. It's this. And the limitation like we've already discovered all the right, right. practical elements. So discover like looking for new elements on our own planet isn't really gonna help. Because they're all gonna be radioactive and they're all not gonna exist for very long. Exactly. So that's why it's important to perhaps um study theirs and see you are they currently using what uh are they also currently within the confines of the periodic table that, that we, we have, have access to yeah. or like what are they on man i don't know that's that's the question and yeah. from you what table two yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like yeah. dude flip the page dude. The <laughs> what there's a back there's, yeah. a, there's a fucking back yeah. yeah no and, and again what? this is like what bob laser is saying i'm gonna keep saying uh, hey so look i have i have the thing though uh, like a question like Say we do, you know, confirm or we have confirmed the existence, but say we able were able to go and 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 prove the existence of these like extraterrestrial crafts or terrestrial crafts from another time, um, and we're able to sit it down and like work through it and reverse engineer it or whatever right. it is. So fucking what? Like, what's the? How is that going to impact well, anything? It, it impacts everything, dude, because it dissolves the limits of what we believe is possible, right? If they grow up and they tell you there's only ten, if they teach you as a kid, there's only ten numbers. These are the only numbers that exist in the world. And then one day you find an eleventh number, and you're like, "What the fuck?" Now you have access to all this other level of knowledge that you can learn into, right? So if if all we our still lives haven't learned like most of this stuff here though like we're talking about like like what, what no about right 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 okay I'm not saying we have all I'm saying is that we've been conditioned to have a specific worldview right where ideas such as hey there's actual beings out there that are not like us that are from elsewhere that may have created us right that's one and people are like no that's fucking crazy well you know what aliens and UFOs are fucking it make, crazy it makes a lot it makes a lot more sense than the genesis story oh 100 they are they're either they're either higher dimensional beings that have access to i don't know a different set of physics that we yeah. do or they're or they're within the same confines that we are in our own physics they're just using their period they're just using the more these practical elements of their elements. way more way better than us right and no, what i was going to say is that um that's the only Bob, explanation though yeah because they, we're living in the same u- universe that we in theory we know all the elements they know yeah right? so either they um have access to something to shit we we will never have access to or they have access to just the same shit we have but they're using it way better yeah to create this badass technology they're using right maybe they're way ahead of us you right. know the people like um henry ford right he made a car right but it wasn't as fast as all the cars that are today nor was it efficient so henry ford and any engineer today are the same they both have the same uh access to the same uh elements yeah. elements and you know physics yeah when it was except just more efficient one is just way it. more advanced oh, yeah or one is just way using it way better than due to way in the past oh so maybe so we just find out how to use something maybe better they're than way yeah. advanced enough yeah maybe you know, they're like gives me a little bit of what a if we turn it sideways and then boom just fucking uh, you know because it's so like you know and it goes back to like chemistry i remember seeing that um that one of the next like revolutionary treatments uh, uh for like cancer was about uh using like the spinal fluid of like some like random species of like bat or something like that that they found and that that was uh, like they they used that that the protein or the some whatever it was that was found in that naturally recodes your own like um dna to fight it, or recodes the cancer cell to fight itself and it effectively kills itself 
Um, I was reading that, and then now, like, not Unlike too long ago, we have, we have bat soup that's, like, fucking coronavirus uh, you Isaac, know, stuff. if I may, did you ever get in, um, and you take this as far as you want, right, because it's your personal life, but did you ever get into that subject of chemistry? What mm, subject of chemistry? You know how you brought up the whole cancer thing? And oh. finding a cure through... I mean, I'm currently taking medicinal chemistry, which is all about drugs, and they're... Their, um, how they are able to achieve their medicinal effects. The semester has started, so I don't really know much about it. But right. um, we do have other methods of treating things um, beyond taking a pill or an injection. We have um, drug delivery systems that are made using nanoparticles. Silver nanoparticles are great drug delivery systems. Um, we also have targeted... Or, um, radiation therapy, you know, so there are many ways to treat, um, to treat things. It's just, we may not be, we might, we still have to advance. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like we're, we're not there yet. Yeah. So I mean, level. back then we used to have, to, uh, we used to have to, um, just in ancient times we had to look to plants and stuff. Uh, for medicine, something that could make us feel better, maybe get us high to eliminate pain. Um, but now we can actually synthesize molecules on our own without ever having to look to... Is there another step higher than that? Is there something more than making up... Can we make entirely new things now instead of mimicking natural ones? Um, what well, Mimicking... Natural, like, because like, basically, uh, I mean, you wouldn't know because I mean, I think if you knew that you, you'd know, mm. right? I guess that you're saying, <laughs> well, what well, we can yeah, do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we can, um, we're always going to look towards our nature, we're always going to be inspired by that, right? Um, but yes, we can, um, create new things that aren't based on nature at all. Nanoparticles, for example, uh, silver nanoparticles, you're not going to find that in nature, um, that's us purposely making um like um uh, making individual particles of silver for example in a certain shape in a way that they can encapsulate a certain molecule and deliver it to this area of the body so will everything will we always be uh forced to uh look to nature no we can definitely create things that um are man-made only and would never have been made would it not have been for us. Yeah, like would it? Yeah, would never naturally. Silver occur. Nan or nanoparticles are one example of that. Vaccines do they cause autism or not? No. Okay, cool. Just making sure. <laughs> Just <laughs> making sure. <laughs> I, I was re it's just reading the other day. Um, or not reading. I was watching this uh, documentary on a uh, docu series on Netflix about the next big pandemic or whatever. It's kind of ironic that I saw it like like two weeks ago that i started watching it and then the, like not too long ago the uh the coronavirus thing started in china i think it's like a, up to a thousand nine hundred confirmed cases now and like i think the death toll is like at 11 now i'm just waiting for these motherfuckers to get back up you know no 18 people uh, have died 18 people have died now. i mean as of right now oh or, shit i don't know or as well, of maybe five 25. Hours, as of five hours ago it wasn't 25 three no. more i thought there was 25 Okay, well, so I mean, somewhere the there. pandemic thing was interesting because it was like uh, one of the things that they said was uh, like at 2019, uh, the World Health Organization deemed vac uh, the, the anti-vax movement one of the most dangerous like threats to humanity ever. Um, ever. Yeah, well, not ever, but of like 2019 like in terms of like catastrophe and stuff. And they said uh, when they just moved, when they moved the, uh, the doomsday clock, the doomsday clock is now uh, no longer two minutes uh, to 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 midnight. Oh, now it's a lot now, closer, now it's right? Like a a hundred seconds. hundred seconds to midnight. So it's under two. It's under two minutes. Um, and uh, that was um, the, one of the things that they cited was you know the dangerous practices that we're having as like humans that are moving along that they're very like um, uninformed or misinformed, um, and they're they're like rallying behind it so hard.